Hi guys, it's Charlie in the Monocure 3D Studio. In this Pro Tips episode, we're going to have an in-depth look at how to best position and support your 3D resin models in the popular software, Chai 2 Box. We have a lot to get through, so we better start now. Okay guys, so here I've got Chai 2 Box open. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty simple layout. This area here represents the build plate. Uh, that we'll be putting our model onto today. So the first thing I need to do is open up uh, a model to, or import a model onto the build plate. Uh, this is done by clicking this button here and navigating to the model you're after. Uh, today I'm going to import this uh, orc by our ambassador Duncan Luca. Uh, so let's bring him in where we press open and see what happens. So straight away you can see it's positioned on the build plate. It's coming on its back and um, that's not ideal because obviously there's nothing really in contact with the build plate and uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't stick at all. So we need to position him in a better position and then we're gonna have to add supports to him. So if we come over here, you can see uh, these four buttons down the side here. Uh, the first one is the move button or positioning on the build plate. So you can see it's quite clever. If you do come off the build plate, uh, it, a part of it will go red and that's indicating that that part won't actually be printed, it's outside of the, the realms or the area of the build plate. So it needs to be within that area. Um, the next button is the rotate button, uh, we'll look at that now. Um, so I always like to rotate the models at to between 30 and 45 degrees. Um, there's a few reasons for that. The first reason uh, being that we try to avoid large areas coming in contact with the FEP sheet. The reason for this is of the, the peel force creates a suction uh, on the FEP sheet as well as the resin when it is cured is heated up and can cause it to adhere to the FEP sheet momentarily. The larger the areas on the FEP sheet, uh, the more likely it is that the model will stick to the FEP sheet and start peeling off the the build plate. I'm going to come to the next button here. This is the scale button. So this is how you can make the model uh, larger or smaller. So if you click on here, as it's all uh, locked, the ratio is locked, it will stay all together. You can change the different sizes individually, but that would mess with the dimensions of the model. So you can see here that uh, that's a little bit bigger. Uh, I'm happy with that. As he's got bigger now, you can see that the angle of it is um, not ideal because it's sort of on the edge slightly here and I'm um, not 100% happy with that, but that's an easy fix because we'll come back to the rotate button here and we'll just rotate just so he's a little bit better positioned on that build plate. So if you come around and have a look down from the top, you can see that he could definitely do with sort of moving over a little bit as well. But yeah, see that that's a perfect example of going out of the, the build area. And that's a really good way to look at it from the top view to see, okay, that's too far um, and that's okay there. We still probably could rotate a little bit more um, just to make it just a little bit safer. So I'm happy with that there. Uh, that looks good and we can flip him around and we can see that. So. He's on a good angle there. Um, the next thing we need to do is add the supports. So the supports uh, in Chai 2 Box, uh, these three, they look like rocket ships over here, but they're the supports. Um, if you click on that tab, it opens up all the support settings. Now the support settings here have been given to me by a friend of Monocure 3D, Fred. He's an avid miniature printer, a huge fan of Duncan's and of Monocure's. And these are not my settings, these are his settings. I'm no expert with supports um, or chai 2 box. These are his settings that he's given us uh, and for me to give to you guys. So he does amazing prints and you would have seen some of them. Uh, and they're very impressive. He has very few failures and his supports, you, you can never see them. So uh, we're using his, his settings here. Now I'll put these settings down below, but I'll just have a quick flick through them here. So the top is obviously how it connects to the top of the model. The middle is how the middle of the uh, support, uh, you know, the, the shape of it, the diameter of it, um, and the angle. The bottom is obviously the bottom of the support and the raft, well, I don't generally use rafts and either does Fred. 
So we're gonna try and get away without using any rafts today. So this is five, this is five mils and that's how far up above the build plate. You can see there that gap between there and there, the lowest point and the build plate. So if we were to put this up, you can see he's going up. Now Fred, Fred recommends five. I don't know what happened then. We'll just bring that back down to, to back to five. So of course you could type, type just type five in there um, as a quick way to get there or whatever height that you want. The next one here is the heavy, medium and light. And this is the, the, the actual thickness or the density of the supports. So Fred recommends heavy, I recommend heavy. And the reason being is that if you go anything other than heavy and you have a failure, you're gonna be disappointed. I know that heavy supports use more resin, but you're gonna use a lot more resin if you have failures. So if you get all the way through this overnight and it hasn't sucked to the build plate, you can have a lot more resin wasted than if you just use heavy supports and it actually worked. So that's the reason I like heavy supports. So does Fred. So if you can stick with them, um, they're gonna be a lot more beneficial and a lot safer in the long run uh, to make sure that the model is actually gonna print. And that's less, less disappointment and in the end, less resin, so. Now, before we get down to the auto support settings, which are here, by the way, I just wanna show you this slider. This is a very important tool on any 3D print software. You can see what it does is it shows you exactly how the printer is gonna print this model. And it's a really good way, especially in resin printing and FDM, to show what we call islands. Now, this here is an island. Um, in fact, everything on this is an island because there's nothing supported. And I'll show you when I add the supports, what I mean more clearly. But you can see this section here, um, has got is not supported by anything so that wouldn't print um, if we come up you can see you know there's a, there's an island there there and an island is an area that is not supported and it's it, it, it's floating in space um, or floating you know in the sea like an island there's a good island there you can see that the chin um, so we'll have a we'll have a look at that that in a minute when we add the supports to see how chai two box uh, deals with that. So let's add the supports. So th there's two ways of adding supports. Uh, one, as I mentioned, is uh, manually, uh, where you literally find an area that needs supporting and you add it manually. Uh, the quicker way is uh, adding the auto supports. And you do this by hitting these two buttons here, the platform or all. Now, platform means that they will just come up from the platform. So let's hit platform and see what happens. That means that there won't be any supports within the model itself. You can see that the only supports are the ones that have come up from the platform. And that's um, you know great if it's gonna work and there's not gonna be any issues. And we can tell that by coming to our slider here and dragging down and looking for those islands. So I always like to start from the bottom and come up. We can see those feet that were obviously were islands are no longer islands. That area there that we were concerned about is no longer a concern. It's well supported by the supports. We come up that, that the island here that we were worried about is no longer an island. It's got a support underneath it, which is great. And we come up here. Now that there is still an island and that's a very good point. And if we hit uh, the all button, which will support within the model itself, let's see what happens. It's gonna say you would like to continue because it's gonna clear the supports that are already there and start again, essentially. Okay, so that's interesting. You can see straight away that Chai 2 Box was clever enough to see that that was an island and that was an overhang and a potential issue. It's also put one here because of that little overhang there. Now I probably will remove that, which is a good idea to show you. And it's also put one inside the mouth here. Again, I'm gonna remove that. It's gonna be hard to get out and I don't think it's 100% necessary. So. If we just get this in slightly better position, to remove it's very simple. You just hit this little minus button here and you just come in and you click on it until it goes red and then you just hit the delete key. And it's as simple as that. I'm not gonna remove this one as well, delete. So I'm gonna leave this one in here because I believe that island's gonna cause an issue and it's pretty well hidden so it's going to be pretty easy to get rid of. I'm not that worried about that one especially when we remove supports because they're not, uh, they haven't been post-cured. They're, they're quite soft still straight off the printer and they're, they're not that 
difficult to remove. I just spotted something here, which is this support foot overhanging and it's turned red. I'm not 100% happy with that as I just don't see the point, especially considering I've got all this room over here. It's not the end of the world, but I don't really like printing that far over. So I can go back to this area here and go back to my move. Now, it should be a matter of just moving on the X and moving it over um, a couple of clicks. You can do it manually by just moving like this as well. Um, you can click on up here and go to the top view and that's looking straight down. So if you didn't see what I did there, I clicked that T. Um, obviously, that's the left view um, and you've got a front view there too. So to, to move around like that, I'm just literally clicking down on the mouse and moving around. So you can see as well, it's interesting, I've moved around to the front view there and there's a little support there that I didn't see before. So I'm gonna go back to the support settings and I'm gonna remove that. So I'm still on delete support. And I'm gonna hit that and then hit the delete button and that will get rid of it. So let's go back to a view where we can see uh, this a little bit better and we can look at how uh, this is gonna print now with the supports and just make sure that we've got everything covered and nothing's there's no islands anywhere and everything's going to print. A little bit of time taken at this point is going to save you a lot of time. Let's face it, 3D printing can be time consuming, especially when you have failures and it can be very frustrating. It's much better to spend the time now uh, to make sure the supports are all, all okay and it's going to print um, rather than it failing and not printing and you're wasting all that, that print time. So for five, 10 minutes of setting up the print, much better than waiting two, three, four hours, which this one will take about four hours, I'd say on my printer, on my frozen shuffle, than arriving and, the, and it failing. So spend the time now, guys, and you won't be disappointed. Okay, so I'm relatively happy with that, guys. So the next thing we need to do is obviously get this ready for printing. Now, chai 2 box does have a slice option, and you can see a big button here that says slice. To be honest, I'm not a fan of slicing within chai 2 box If the printer manufacturer has given you one, guys, you're much better off using their slicer to do the slicing rather than slicing within chai 2 box Unless they've given you the settings for chai 2 box please just use the slicer. Um, so this is a great program for positioning and for the supports. So all you need to do is to save it with the support. So if I save this, um, as org one dash sup, for example. Um, I better call it sup one because we've got another one there. Then that is now the new STL with the supports in the position on the build plate, everything ready to go. So now all you need to do is go into your other software. If it's a frozen shuffle, that would be nano DLP or an AnyCubic Photon, that would be their own slicing software, or Creation Workshop if it was a D7, and you get the idea. Go into that software, import the file, the new file, the ORC support file, and it will pop into the software like this. It will slice and print beautifully, hopefully. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's much better to do that in my mind than slicing here, and the reason is, and I'm gonna click here to show you, you can see here, there are a lot of different settings. And are they the same as the settings and the way that the printer manufacturer is set up in their slicing software? Who knows? So as I say, unless you've got the manufacturer's settings for chai 2 box just slice in their software. Don't slice it here and just go ahead and save it as I just showed you. So guys, I hope that's been informative. It's a really brief, quick look at um, supports. Um, I haven't shown you how to add a support that's pretty simple. We just come down here and rather than um, delete support, we add a support. So if there was an area that we were a bit unsure of, we literally just click on that area and we can add a support that way. So let's just come around to the back of the model and see if there's any areas around the back that might need supporting. But just another quick trick I want to show you is if you go upside down on this, which is a nice little feature of chai 2 box it'll show you uh, the areas that needed supporting. And I guess they're the areas of the 45 degrees that are set um, down here in the auto support. So they're the areas that, you know, wouldn't print if unsupported. So the overhang areas, I guess. 
So you can see here, there's quite a large red area here. So that really should have a support. So let's pop one on. So that was so easy. I just clicked add and clicked it and there it went. All right, so I'm really happy with this now. I think the supports are good. It looks solid. There's no in any areas that are gonna be really obvious or hard to get off. So it's time to print it now. Well, there you have it. As you can see by this result, the model position and the support structures worked well. It looks like the Orca's printed perfectly and I can honestly say that this was the first attempt and there was no disappointing print failures. I always wash up in resin away before removing the supports. Then removing the supports is pretty easy. Just carefully use some side cutters while the resin is still soft and hasn't been post-cured yet. Pat the model to remove the excess resin away and then use a post-curing unit like this one to post-cure the model. Remember, the longer you post cure, the better for the print longevity. Thanks for watching guys, it was a long one but we had a bit to get through. Please remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes, but most importantly, remember to keep on 3D printing.